My final panelist today is a person who is doing an enormous amount to educate the world about AIDS. He is David Crow. He is the president of the Alberta Reappraising AIDS Society and a member of the Canadian Association of Journalists. And as a researcher and writer, David focuses on the analysis of scientific justification of modern medicine. Nice to have you with us today, David. Thanks for having me back on your show, Gary. I really appreciate what you did today. Um, I, I really did not think that uh, Gallo and Montaigne would agree to be on your show, and I'm impressed that they were, even though it was for a, a short time, and, and they kind of embarrassed themselves by losing, well, Gallo at least lost his temper. I would like for you to take a few moments. I'm going to start the next program about 10 minutes now. Sure. I want you to have an opportunity to tell this audience worldwide. We have more than 154 countries tuned in right now. We have people watching this over the Internet and listening. I want you to tell us right now, uninterrupted by me, take us through the paradigm of AIDS and HIV and why it should be challenged. Would you do that, please? Well, uh, yeah, I, I guess... The I wrote down some notes from what Gallo and Montaigne were saying, and I'd just like to respond to their view of things, because it's, it's, um, they were basically trying to argue from a seat of authority. Believe us, this is the truth. Um, Gallo said that AZT is a reverse transcriptase inhibitor. That means that it interferes with the enzyme that allows RNA to be uh, converted to DNA. First of all, we know that reverse transcriptase is part of normal cellular metabolism, and so inhibiting it could have adverse consequences. But we also know that AZT is a DNA chain terminator. The T in AZT stands for thymidine, one of the four nucleosides of DNA. If you throw AZT into a body, it will stop the nucleus from dividing, so it stops cell division. And more importantly, it turns out that it also stops mitochondria from dividing. These are uh, sort of separate organisms that live in every living cell in the human body, and they are extremely important for energy metabolism. And that's why uh, AZT is associated with muscle wasting, because it kills mitochondria. So to say it's a reverse transcriptase inhibitor and it's specific to a virus is, is totally false. Uh, they also said that the only people who can comment on things like HIV or NAIDS are epidemiologists, biologists, physicians, UNAIDS, World Health Organization, NIH, National Academy of Sciences, etc. Again, this is, this is basically saying that only people who are invested in the system can comment on the system. That's kind of like only allowing generals to comment on, on whether there should be a war. You're always going to get the same answer. Uh, all of these organizations... All of these classifications of people have enormous conflicts of interest. Their budget, their salary, their grants, their status comes from the HIV-AIDS paradigm. Uh, people like Kerry Mullis, uh, Peter Duesberg, uh, don't get their money from the AIDS establishment. And in fact, their bravery has caused them in many cases to suffer tremendously. Uh, Duesberg um, uh, has has suffered probably more than anybody, also Andy Maniotis, Rebecca Culshaw, the Perth Group in Australia. Uh, these scientists have been prevented from publishing. They've been uh, ridiculed in the press. Uh, they've they've uh, lost opportunities for uh, advancement in their careers just because they've gone up against the huge uh, invested establishment. Uh, Andy Maniotis was a little inaccurate when he said the, he implied that Montagne had only recently started talking about oxidative stress. Luc Montagne, who got the, the uh, Nobel Prize supposedly for discovering HIV, has been talking about oxidative stress for many years. Uh, Luc Montagne has, has, has said at times, many times, that HIV is not the only cause of AIDS, that you can have immune deficiency without HIV. Uh, he promotes fermented papaya, uh, as a treatment for oxidative stress, and he also says that uh, that AIDS is often a symptom of oxidative stress. Montaigne is very uh, clever, and he will never join the dots together, but it, it doesn't take much imagination to see that what he's really saying is if somebody's immune suppressed, you can treat them nutritionally, and they stand a good chance of uh, recovering. But he also knows that his whole status and career is invested in the AIDS establishment, so he never crosses the line and, and says, um, you know, especially in front of somebody like Gallo, well, no, you don't really need HIV uh, to cause AIDS. And if you go that far, 
since all the 30 different diseases which are known as AIDS in the United States uh, have separate causes, you can very easily get to the point where you're saying, like, why do we even need to bring HIV into this uh, conversation? Uh, Gallo, I believe, said AIDS drugs improve patient conditions, and, you know, triple drug therapy is a major advance. But those drugs are only tested against so-called surrogate markers, like the level of CD4 uh, immune cell counts and the so-called viral load. They're generally not tested against long-term uh, clinical progression, uh, and if they are, it's by comparison with AZT. But the original AZT trials were heavily corrupted, um, something that John Lawrenson showed many years ago in his book, uh, AZT Poison by Prescription. Um, the people who were on the placebo were purchasing the drug or sharing drugs with other people. Um, the, the people in charge of the trial would put sick people, they would move them from the, uh, from the AZT arm of the trial to the placebo arm of the trial. Um, the people who were on uh, AZT had to also be on heavy uh, blood transfusion regimens. So the AZT trial was hopelessly corrupt. And uh, so Gallo to say, well, it was an experiment, a few people died, that's, that's totally false. What happened was the panic led to a demand for drugs which was predictable, and uh, they created a, a fraudulent trial, and they approved a drug which then killed many people. In the new um, film, uh, House of Numbers, there's a, a case of a, a baby from Romania diagnosed HIV positive on AZT for two years, um, it suffered tremendous side effects, including serious muscle problems, which is, as I mentioned, is due to the death of mitochondria. Her parents were, sa she was saved by Peter Duesberg, who uh, around 1992 wrote to the parents and said, you've got to stop AZT, it's going to kill your baby. They stopped the AZT, the AIDS disappeared. All the health uh, uh, problems of this, this young baby disappeared. And at the premiere of House of Numbers in Nashville a few weeks ago, a beautiful, healthy 19-year-old girl stood on the stage and she hasn't taken an AIDS drug since... 1992. It's about 17 years that she's been recovered her health and been healthy without any AIDS drugs. Uh, the father said that of the 10 other AIDS babies in the, in the state where they live, uh, all were treated by the same doctors, all the others stayed on the drugs, and all of the others died. AZT was a holocaust. It was not uh, an experiment where a few people uh, suffered. Uh, it's going to go down in, in history as, as one of the biggest genocides caused by, by a false scientific theory. Um, Gallo also said there were experiments in animals. Well, I'm not sure there were many experiments in animals prior to testing the drug in humans, but since the drug was approved, there have been many experiments on AZT in animals, and uh, they have shown uh, that the drug is carcinogenic, that it's seriously damages the blood supply, which has also been found in, in, uh, in humans. Uh, it's also been found in humans that um, after, I think, about three years, there's a, almost a 50% chance of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma if you take AZT. So the drug trials, the, pardon me, the animal trials of AZT have shown tremendous toxicity. Now, it would be impossible to have um, animal trials of AZT that showed any success because there's no animal model for AIDS. You can't give animals HIV and have them come down with AIDS, even supposing that the stuff they're calling HIV really is. So there's no way that you could provide an experiment where you would, you would give uh, animals the virus and they'd get sick, and then you'd give them the virus plus AZT and they wouldn't get sick. That would be an impossible experiment. Uh, there is no animal model, therefore, you know, Gallo was making, making it up, which unfortunately is a is something that Gallo has done uh, many times. And, uh, Gary, you were very correct to bring up the irony of, of Gallo using the National Institutes of Health and other organizations to defend his position when they, in fact, had, had found a lot of evidence of scientific misconduct on the part of uh, Robert Gallo.